But BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, uh, obviously the clip, the clip is out of context, but you can gather, you know, you still can gather what he specifically wants to say in his statements. Uh, and it's very interesting that we, we should tune in because yeah. this man is one of the richest men in the world. Yeah, so this is Larry Fink talking on national debt, and no matter how we skin it, there needs to be an alternative solution. If you don't know who Larry Fink is, CEO of BlackRock, they are one of the largest. You don't know who BlackRock is? Well, yeah, you probably living, work for their company. Or you live under a rock. Um, you know, they they own a lot of companies that you use every single day. They own the five top five major defense companies. Yeah. They get their hands in everything. They're very globally connected. The IMF and the World Bank were created 80 years ago when banks, not markets, financed most things. Today, the financial world is flipped. The capital markets are the biggest source of private sector financing, and unlocking that money requires a different approach than the bank balance sheet model of yesterday. There's still a lot of work to be done, but reform over the past eight months have resulted in billions of dollars of new dollars for the developing country's infrastructure. That's what you saw last week with the announcement of the Investor Coalition. BlackRock, GIP, KKR, and other major firms will deploy $25 billion in Asia's emerging economies. In a way, it's an Indo-Pacific counterpoint to Italy's Mate plan, which is helping African economies grow, and that's important. Every country in the world needs a growth strategy. But if I could convey one more important message today, it would be the countries that need growth most right now are not just emerging economies. Great economic powers, including the G7, are in fact on the list and need growth going forward. All of us are staring down a growth dilemma. Whether we solve it or not, it's a significant economic fork in the road for our countries. Today, the G7 average debt to GDP is 129, 129%. No matter how much we tax, how much we cut or reduce that debt, it will not be enough. The only way we can achieve this future of growth is by truly growing out of it. But just growth is becoming more important because we need to be focusing on our fiscal health. It is also becoming much more difficult to achieve. Within 25 years, most of the G7 countries will be a dem on demographic downslope. Working age population will decline. The ceiling on growth will get lower and lower. This is why building new infrastructure is critical, especially through public-private partnerships. Okay, you can pause it. That, yeah, the biggest, the biggest issue I have when I hear these guys talk is they talk about growth. And so anybody who's an entrepreneur, especially come from the world of tech, will, will tell you that growth and scale are not the same thing. So business growth is about increasing top line revenue at any cost, right? So if you're a capital allocator like BlackRock, you need to be able to deploy capital in order to keep raising money, collecting fees like you do every single year. Scale, on the other hand, says, no, 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 no. We're actually going to slow down our growth. We're going to fix our costs by becoming more efficient. And then once those things are in place, then we can return on increasing our top line revenue because we've figured out how to fix our, fix our costs. Challenge is we use those terms synonymously. Mm. Growth and scale. They are not the same thing. He doesn't see a way forward for him to allocate capital appropriately if we don't figure out how to build more infrastructure. Why do we need to build more infrastructure? I don't understand why we need to build more infrastructure. Well, I, I, when I, the way I hear that, I, I hear two bookends. One, I think I hear what he said about the nations. Um, he full on kind of put them on blast. No matter how much you tax, no matter how much you throw out, think of all the rhetoric we've heard in the last several years about taxation. Right. He's saying that ain't going to cut it. And so I think when he talk about infrastructure, I think he's talking about um, monetary new, infrastructure. New currency. New currency. Yeah. Because, because otherwise, to your point of like when you talk about growth and scale and infrastructure, you're talking about that's a, that's a much – there's different layers and levels to where he was going with that if that's where he was going. And so I'm just like, well, he just put them on blast, on, on notice, and he just said – there's something changing. Well, it's also in a rec if you're if you're looking at the article that we just covered before that, it's a exactly. recognition of the de-dollarization yep. of the global economy, right? And so the model that we have right now, of just print and deploy globally, is not going to work going forward. Yeah, 
I, I think, you know, that's a two minute clip where, you know, you can lull and ebb and flow through listening to that, but that's a pretty significant statement um, given his position in, in the world of business, economics, and politics, and considering the fact that they hold 305,000 Bitcoin, yeah. uh, his company. Right after where he previously said it was worthless. Well, correct. They all say that until they're on the right side of the trade. So these are big deals, like to your point, your, how you handle your powder. And our business owners out there are having to contemplate moving beyond the status quo, financially speaking. So. Absolutely.